Happy Friday and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host and all-around network nerd, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting March 17, 2014. Let's start this week's security stories with a few stories that relate to the recent disappearance of a Malaysian Airline 370. There's two security stories around this particular airplane news. First of all, beware of cyber scams, especially on Facebook, that is leveraging this news to try to fish victims. There's a couple different Facebook scams going around, including a phishing email, which tries to say that the plane was found and they have a video of the passengers. If you click on that link, they take you to a survey page designed to make the attacker some revenue. The other thing I want to mention is there are some stories this week about how the disappearance of this aircraft may have to do with hacking. And frankly, this story probably is not true. Really, this whole story centers around a particular a terrorist expert mentioning that plane hacking is possible and maybe that's what happened. But there does not seem to be any evidence supporting this. So I just want to take this opportunity to mention how FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, doesn't really help the security community. And this might be weird coming from me. In fact, I've actually talked about airplane hacks on this podcast. I talked about a researcher named Hugo Tesso who found some vulnerabilities in airplane navigation systems that hackers could leverage. To me, that's not FUD. That has fact and research based on it. And from it, you can also assess the right amount of risk severity. This is just a research paper. A human pilot can override the autopilot. And if airlines pay attention to this, they can fix it. On the other hand, a story that has no evidence, that's just based on a, a comment that something might have happened, they might create a fuddy, uh, catching headlines that people might read, but they do nothing to help the security industry or the people out there protect themselves. In fact, that kind of story incites fear that gives you a improper amount of, of risk severity. How can you measure the real threat? On one hand, as someone that talks about security news every week, I think it's very important to let the world know potential risks out there. On the other hand, we really need to, to make decisions based on real evidence. So try to avoid reading stories that are just based on somebody saying this might have happened. The second story I want to cover is how a security researcher temporarily crashed or DDoS Google Play while testing, uh, doing an unsanctioned test of a vulnerability he was researching in the marketplace. Long story short, during the week, a researcher I've talked about before, Ibrahim Balik, was testing a vulnerability against Google Play and he, he uploaded a specially crafted app that caused the Google Play marketplace to stop accepting any more applications. And then apparently he uploaded the app again and DDoSed it a second time and of course he has said he did this to verify that it was really his test that caused this to happen. So this is an interesting story just because of the vulnerability. Uh, Balak has obviously found a vulnerability in the marketplace that Google needs to look at. In fact, apparently 30 minutes after the second upload, they did fix this flaw. However, it also brings another point across, which is unsanctioned penetration tests. On one hand, I really like security researchers. Researchers that are finding flaws in products, if they do so responsibly, if they do it in order to let the vendor know and to help them fix it, and in fact, wait for for this disclosure for the vendor to fix it, this is actually a good thing. This is a researcher helping vendors create products that protect their customers. However, when you're testing vulnerabilities against public production servers and you haven't got the permission of the company you're attacking, this is really kind of bad gray area. Obviously, this affected the Google Play market. It prevented a lot of other developers from making changes to applications that actually make them money and do good things. So I really don't like researchers that do these sorts of unsanctioned tests. I like it when they actually are looking for vulnerabilities in, say, web applications, but to actually exploit them in your test without getting permission is really a bad thing to do. So I really wish researchers like Balak would avoid doing anything that affects production servers. 
Now, of course, Balak has apologized. He said his intention wasn't to harm Google. He is still trying to find this flaw. And I do think, you know, I take him at his word. Nonetheless, if you're a penetration tester, be very careful about testing targets that you don't have permission to test. So the last story I want to cover this week is Operation Windingo. This was a research paper released by ESET. I'll post a link to it on the blog post associated with this video that kind of outlined a, a relation between a lot of malware that has been attacking Linux-based web servers. So you might remember over the past year, I've been talking about a mysterious web server attack. Uh, we've been calling it CDORT, where web servers would get infected. And when they were infected, they would redirect people to malicious drive-by download sites. But this was really smart malware. It actually would dynamically create the redirection links on the website. They weren't just embedded as static code, but they were created dynamically as people visited certain pages and the bad guys would sort of blacklist other people to make it harder for security researchers to find these hijacked web pages. And of course the big mystery was how these web hosting companies and web pages got infected in the first place. In any case, East Set's uh, Operation Windingo paper highlights how different various malware uh, variants are all used together in this particular campaign. They talk about a new piece of malware that they've been researching they call Linux Eberry. And this is basically a backdoored version of OpenSSH that gives bad guys backdoor access. And they've been following this in the command and control channels and how bad guys are using this. And they found they've been associated with uh, servers that have been infected with CDORT and some other malware variants that all work together. Long story told, ESET has found that over 25,000 Linux-based web servers were infected with this whole campaign. And these servers were infecting, you know, redirecting millions. You know, each day maybe a, a half a million people might be redirected to a drive-by download site. And these servers were also used to send spam messages. They're generating around 35 million spam messages a day. And while some of the servers have been cleaned, uh, ESET says there's at least 10,000 servers still infected. So the takeaway here, first of all, Linux is not invulnerable. You know, there's a lot of people out there that talk about how secure Linux is. And there's some certain things that Linux does, like having strong separation between user and root. That is a good security practice, but there's plenty of vulnerabilities in Linux software. So whether you run Linux, Windows, Mac, or any version of OS, it has vulnerabilities you have to patch and you have to think about security. Another thing you really need to take away is if you're a Linux web developer, you need to check your server to make sure you're not infected. And it's a pretty long command, so I can't say it out loud, but ESET in their report has given you a a command line uh, a command you can actually run against your web server and it will depending on its result you can find out if you're infected so I highly recommend you check this out so that's it for this week's episode, which is probably coming to you a bit late because I had a very busy work week. However, there's still been a ton of security news I didn't have a chance to cover. In fact, you know, pwned, to own, uh, pwned a bunch of browsers last week and I mentioned patches would be coming. Well, there's new Chrome and Firefox updates you might want to look into as well. And there's a ton of other news stories, so be sure to check the blog post associated with this video as the reference section will have links to all these other stories I didn't get to cover. Besides that, you should follow me on Twitter. I'm at SecAdept or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.